Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Taxel Insiders. I'm your host again. I'm Brian Seidensticker. I'm CEO of Taxel Resources. And with me today, I have a new guest, although uh, Mark and I have known each other for many years. Mark's the CEO of Pro Capital, which is a, a pretty um, active investor in New Jersey, um, as well as a couple other states. And New Jersey's been um, pretty, pretty, not, I don't know if heavily affected is the right word, Mark. We'll get to that, but definitely affected, right, by yeah. Tyler Hennepin. And and so wanted to talk a bit about that. But uh, I guess first off, uh, welcome. Thanks, Mark, for joining me. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Well, um, we might as well just kind of dive right into it. Obviously, you know, Tyler Hennepin yeah. uh, Supreme Court case is something that we've talked about a couple of times on this podcast. I think it's going to be something that we talk about a lot over the next few years, maybe the next decade. We'll see. Um, but, you know, that that case had a you know, potentially huge ramifications for the tax industry, definitely in some states. And and New Jersey is you know, one of those that was um, nearly immediately affected Um with, you know, I guess yeah. the, the moratorium on, you know, issuing in deeds and so forth. And I know you're kind of leading the charge or ProCap's leading the charge, but the, you know, investors um, have, have tried to take an active role in helping, you know, guide um, legislation, you know, to bring New Jersey, you know, in compliance with, with Tyler Hennepin. But um, I don't want to give away everything, but um, maybe we'll just start with, you know, Following Tyler Hennepin and that ruling, what what happened in New Jersey and, and why are we here? Well, I think fi following Tyler Hennepin was initially confusion. I think that, uh, you know, Tyler Hennepin is, is not straightforward in any way. You're you're talking about a government not allowed to take a surplus. However, the Supreme Court was very, very careful about some of the definitions that they put in there. The, the surplus is not equity. Um, and then and, and, uh, this property does not qualify as abandoned and many other kind of caveats. But I think that I think that the confusion, what happened is you now have a situation where a lot of states want to avoid unnecessary litigation. And a lot of states that have a, a component where the government gets money in some way are taking a step back and say, and, and asking, are we in compliance? And, and I, I also think that even though the Supreme Court's verdict was stated one way with very specifically using the word surplus and not equity, and then that's, they are two different things that now I think the parties involved on the other side have changed their words and they've changed what they're trying to do and basically say that any there this should never happen to anybody and and you know everything should go to a sheriff sale and that's so caused a lot of confusion yeah and i, I guess uh, a quick run through of you know tyler Pin obviously started in minnesota um you know and minnesota had a very unique um set of state statutes that basically allowed you know, the, the, the county government to um, take the property, right, sell it, and they happened to get a, a, a an amount that was in excess of what they were owed. Um, so in this case, I'll call it a premium. Um, and in Minnesota, that premium is not available to the, the previous owners or anybody else that had interest in that property. And, um, you know, that case started right at the state level, eventually ended up with the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, no, nope, you know, um, you can't, you know, Minnesota, you know, county, you, you can't just sell somebody else's property and have uh, an excess amount, the surplus, right, as you stated, um, and just keep that, right? That's that's what they were very clear in saying was not acceptable. And then they were, like you said, they were very vague about you know, a lot of other components of, of the case. And, and my understanding is they kind of had said, you know, this is the guidance, you know, we're going to leave it to lower courts to figure out how this is worked out state by state, right? So they didn't say, here's how it has to be, right? And that's kind of where we're at, right? Is the state's figuring out, okay, well, here's our process. You know, do we meet the the intent of Tyler Hennepin? And if not, what can we do to, to kind of change things to be, you know, um, you know, compliant or with Absolutely. Uh, in the spirit of what Tyler Hennepin is trying to tell us? So, um, right. And the vagueness, just so if I, the, you know, the vagueness also, I, I think it's, it's important part of this is to note that you know in the in the case of Miss Tyler, I mean she had 
uh, delinquent homeowners fees and a delinquent mortgage that would have usurped all of this surplus that we're talking about. So, but what the what the Supreme Court doesn't do, and we understand why they're not in they're not in the business. They're just saying that Miss Tyler should get the money because she would then take care of those debts. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, if she sold the property herself, those debts would get get take care of, taken care of on the settlement table by a title company. So it's really it kind of is a circular. You get to a circular argument and something that we in this industry understand. We you know it seems incredulous, right? Someone loses their property. Who would do this? And you know a lot of times the answer isn't someone necessarily that's you know not pulling in money, but it's someone that's just the property so saddled with debt that it's easier to walk away. Right, right. But uh, we probably have a whole series about different scenarios, but you're exactly right. It is not right. um, an entire, entire, that scenario is not one where it was, um, you know, a, a, a huge taking, right? It was a taking. I think I I certainly wouldn't it disagree with, with the, you know, I, actually, I think the Supreme Court in a lot of ways got it right as far as, you know, the way that Minnesota was doing things. And, and I, I don't believe county government should make it a, a, profit center right that's not good for anybody um but there's Agreed. there certainly needs to be a way of addressing this stuff right and i think that's where we get into how do how are states going to you know, look at tyler hennepin and account for that and how do they if they need to change legislation how do they change it to be in what they consider compliance with the spirit of, of tyler hennepin so maybe we'll maybe we'll dive in a little bit of that of um what was the sure. what was the immediate you know yeah you know, Thing that happened in Jersey and and why, I guess why why is the the why why is the states right and really the judges saying hey we need to look at our legislation and in, in more detail what what was it about Tyler Hennepin that made New Jersey specifically go okay let's pause here. Well, I, look, I think that I think the first thing that makes New Jersey do it is a very I mean again I you know I won't go on the very blue state. So it's it's not necessarily the same type of uh, pro business. So this is a, especially in the wheelhouse. So people said, let's pump the brakes. Let's see what's going on. But in New Jersey, if you know, for those that don't know the bidding structure, you you start your bid at eighteen percent, and you bid that. It's a bid down model until you get to zero, and then you get a premium. The premium he bids up in increments. I've seen premiums as high as two million dollars. Not not obviously very often, but. And that's basically a, a, is held in escrow at the town until the redemption occurs and then the, the investor gets their money back. But in the case of real estate, the investor would get the property and the town would keep the premium. So that premium, there are those that called that, why is the government, to, to the point you made, getting I mean unjustly enriched? And I think that was the first, kind of pause because this this mechanism is in place although I know in other states that don't have premiums they're also taking a a hard look and I think that I think that the wheels mm-hmm. of legislation weren't moving at all despite all, I mean we have efforts in there and so if if I think Tyler came down in like the 20th 25th of May in early July the the judiciary said hold on you know we want to change the way we award the final judgments. They 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 wanted uh, us to increase our personal servicing. They wanted all instead of having a foreclosure unit declare uh, the final judgments, they wanted them to specifically go before a chancery judge, even though most of them are unopposed. So they they kind of put a lot of obstacles in the way, and then it, about sixty days later, kind of changed, moved the goalposts again. And now they actually have asked us to have language in our foreclosures that tells the delinquent party they might have the right to surplus equity, which is, look, I mean, I'm not trying to, it's it's not it's not normal that they that you tell the other person what their arguments could be. So what we've had then is, um, are you still hearing me? Yep, we're here. Okay, sorry. I get I have computers sometimes. Um, so... What we've had is confusion. The tax sales are still happening. Liens are still being sold in this state. Um, but we have confusion. And, you know, as in so many other states, tomorrow is election day. And sometime after tomorrow, the legislature will reconvene. 
And we'll start talking about, you know, what this is. I, I believe the judiciary is really just waiting for the legislature to justify it so that they're not on, they're not viewed as in this way. But it's 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 caused a lot of problems. And I think that so, you know, the, the judiciary convened a judiciary working group that I I requested to be a part of. Our, our foreclosing attorneys are mostly on it, which did not work out. But I really just truly believe that it's a lack of uh, education. I think that, you know, judges only see the the bad cases that come before them. If it's unopposed, they never look at it. So all you're seeing is someone that's motioning to vacate a final judgment. It's very, it's not, it's not very, very often it, it happens. And, you know, in this industry, I, it's important that the facts are out there and, you know, very little of what we do invi- involves owner occupants. It's just not, it's just not who gets foreclosed upon. It's mostly tenant occupied or abandoned properties. And so we're really trying to get that education out there because if you've ever lived on a block with an abandoned property, trust me, you don't want it on your block. The statistics mm-hmm. around abandoned properties are for not just not just for crime, but you know, risk to our firefighters if there's a fire set there. You know, ri- you know, concentric circles of property values going down around you know abandoned and blighted properties. So we're really trying to get that out there because, and I, you know, I sometimes get on my high horse. If you're in this business and you're your investor and you get a judgment, and the owner comes forward with the money within a, a month or two months, and you fight that. I think you're in the wrong place. It's just not, you know, you're you you're not trying to profit off of that, and you know that that just is, you know, and I think that that's a misconception. Yeah, so well, we'll, I think that's we'll a put forward. Yeah, well, I think that's a. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, what we've put forward. We're just trying to keep it simple, in our mind, and I. There are other. What we've basically said is that it just similar to Indiana, South Carolina, I believe Missouri allow the homeowner a month to apply for that premium after the property gets taken. Um, I think it keeps things moving. Um, and it's, it's just a very similar, you know, similar argument. And that way the government isn't getting unjustly enriched. The delinquent homeowner has something they can apply for. And candidly, they don't have to apply it to their debt if they don't want, I mean, right. The mortgage is extinguished. They can take the money. Um, but I mean, in you know, if in New Jersey, by the time you get a property, that property is four and a half to five years tax delay. And I just think that I think that there aren't enough people out there that understand that if someone doesn't go in and pay these taxes and sometimes reap the benefits is primarily on something that's abandoned or blighted, the taxes just have to go up everywhere. There's no sense in having a tax sale if there's not an alternative. Right. When I it kind of you know, I guess summarize what you'd mentioned is, I mean, there was a lot of confusion immediately, right? Um, and confusion around um, just not necessarily being fully educated on the reality of, of the, the small fraction, right? We're talking, uh, you know, 1% of, of tax liens that end up in this state, right? And then there's even smaller percentage of those that are actually occupied. And it's a very small fraction of those that are actually occupied by the previous owner, right? So we're talking a very, very, very small right. fraction, right? Uh, but in general, I think the 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 education or misinformation is the fact that you know most times, right? This is taking the abandoned property on the street and and attempting to get it occupied and back on the tax roll. That's a whole point of all of this, right? And so there's a lot of benefit for not only that block but the you know the community, the county as a whole for having a process that works, right? Um, now. That confusion, as you said, right, and um, can be solved a lot of ways. But it, you know, one of the, one of the ways is what you're leading, which is you know, okay, the investor community basically proposing a here's what we think the simple change, legislate, you know, from a statute standpoint, could be implemented that would make New Jersey compliant to what Tyler Hennepin is is intending to to say, which is, hey, if there is a surplus then that surplus, the previous owner should have right to that surplus, not necessarily be a profit center to the county, right, or the township, I right. guess, in this case, uh, for New Jersey. Um, and so, you know, make that change, give the previous owner that right, and and that's really the only tweak that we need to make here. And so that's what you're, 
you know, trying to push for. Is that accurate? Yeah. And it, look, yes, absolutely. And there's a, look, there's another, there's another school of thought that's a sheriff sale. And in New Jersey, what's being bandied about, now there's a lot of conversations happening, is a, an opt-in bill where you, 40, within 45 days of the foreclosure starting, you would opt in to have a sheriff sale. Lien holder gets paid off, investor buys the property. It's here's here's my, and I, I can only say my my thoughts on it. How many people, if it's owner occupied, how many people two years in, rather than say I'm going to find a way to pay this off in the next year and a half to two years, are get, within 45 days going to say sure, no problem. Well, I mean, I don't think I don't think people are going to inherently do that since most of these are unopposed till the last minute. And I think you're just inviting another opportunity for the courts to say, well, no, I don't care that it's two years later. We're going to allow that. And you're not you're not in the in the in these cases, you're not taking abandoned properties and putting them aside. And you're not taking some of the to tenant owned. And when I say tenant owned, I mean, non CO type stuff. We're not talking about a nice apartment building. We're talking about people that are taking collecting rent, but not paying the taxes. So without separating those into their own group, which by the way, again, Tyler versus Hennepin, the verdict was very clear. Abandoned properties can have their own rules. It, it, it said it, it said, it said the only, this isn't an abandoned property because you can't just say it's abandoned because they're tax delinquent, which we agree with. In New Jersey, there's a form and you have to check off the things that are cause abandonment because vacancy and abandonment are not the same, right? Vacancy is, is there's no one there, but it's it's well kept, it's properly boarded, the electric's still there, et cetera. You know, abandoned is 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 not is very different. And and the, but the reason I I'm kind of saying all this is because I think that it all then comes back to the tax lien investor, right? And the bottom line is if if you're going to take the real estate on some of this away. And historically, we make money on just over half of our real estate. I mean, there, and, and I, again, this is something I don't think that's understood. I mean, we have, you know, you all the time, you end up buying a flag lot, buying something else. Now that's just, you know, liens that are discarded because no one's going to ever pay for them. It's a buyer beware market. The town doesn't give you your money back and say, oh, sorry, that's just a garage. We shouldn't have told you that. And these things compile because, there's risk. There's risk for the reward. And the problem becomes if you're going to really cramp down the lean investor, um, I, I think what you have is you have lean investors, which we've already started seeing in this state, say, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to start, I'm not going to keep investing in urban and rural, you know, two, two very different types of communities, but both saddled with the same issues. And when you start you know, look, I mean, if, if, you know, in a, in a normal urban rural place, they're probably only collecting 90 to 95% of their taxes. So someone's got to bridge that gap or services go away. And, and without that real estate component to make this business more palatable for the bad investments of which there are many, I just think you end up uh, in a, a different conversation. And that is, we can't meet our budgets this year. We have to raise taxes to fill that. And it's a it's it's kind of a never ending cycle. And I and no one in New Jersey needs to point out that New Jersey is the highest tax state in in the country. Because it is. <laughs> no one here wants to raise taxes. So, you know, it's just and it's just unfortunate because and, and you know it, it's a it's a, like to me, it's a very nuanced discussion. And it, you know, in this world of like hyper partisan, everyone's gotta be one way or the other. There's a there's a middle ground here that re you really need to have a conversation with people that says, listen, create programs. You know, they're already in place to help people create rules that don't kick people out of their homes. We we're I'm all I'm on board with all of that. But you got to you got to protect the you know, 99 percent of people that are paying their taxes on time. It's tough. You know, you see both sides. Right. Like, well, yeah, I started seeing, I'll say, unintended consequences right from in an ideal world you'd have 
like 100% alcohol efficiency, right? A lot of competition for the liens, right? A lot of competition in the states that have deed sales, right? And everything is selling for what yep. a reasonable market value would be, right? If you have that competition there. But um, I think you mentioned, we certainly have seen it as well of you know, lien investors in New Jersey, many states, right? Either sitting aside or saying, well, you know, this is way too much turmoil, we're out, right? So you're inadvertently creating less competition, yeah. inadvertently, you know, harming, right? Because uh, less competition means, you know, every state's slightly different, right? But, you know, higher bid percentage, which ends up being a higher rate that the, the taxpayer has to pay in order to redeem yep. the property, right? And this- Which uh, makes it harder for them to redeem and then you go down that slope, yeah. Yep, yep. Well, um, real quick on the sheriff sale aspect, right? So the the legislation that you're proposing or pushing is the, hey, make this simple tweak to the overage amount to make the previous owner have the ability to um, request that, right? Now, it seems like a simple change. I know legislation is never simple, but um, so what's the, sh the sheriff sale was, um, I guess, allowing that on everyone or what, I guess what's that, or is it just making it more so, known that they can do that at, at the first 45 days? What's that? Well, I, no, I think they're going to, I think what they want to do is look again, it's it. We, the, not, the only other bill that's introduced is a total sheriff sale bill, which is dead on dead on arrival because that, that would, you'd, you'd have to rewrite the whole, the whole law for that to happen. I mean, you just couldn't, it wouldn't work. Which so is, what um, do you mean by total sheriff sale? Basically, sheriff sale. I, I mean, they, there's no more real estate. Everything goes to sheriff sale at the end, like Florida, right? But it doesn't work with the way, I mean, you, you can try doing that. But, you know, I I think that where you run into the problems there, again, are these are, I mean, you know, New Jersey's, they're older communities and things. You you want, people want their communities to be worked on and, and that you're, it, it's kind of like that interesting, like the takings thing is saying government get away. But if you do it the wrong way, you're just going to have more government because if you don't have the investors doing it, who's doing it? And I, I've, uh, uh, no, we deal with municipalities all the time. We have great relationships with them. But this is the last thing they want to do. I, I Towns towns are allowed to foreclose on properties where the liens, where the liens haven't been bought based on statute. I was in a town about four or five years ago. They were still working on, on foreclosures from 1987. I mean, they just don't, it's just not right. They just don't, the only one in our state, the only one that I can think of that's current is, is Trenton. And they just, they're, they're, they're good at it, but I don't think they have a solution to what the, for what to do with those properties. Their vision was always, we're going to get like 10, 12 houses in a row and we're going to develop. And anyone that's been in this business says it does, you don't get 10 or 12 in a row. You get them all over the place. But, but the, what we've, when we've been in a lot of conversations with you know, senators, assembly people, different organizations, New Jersey league, the governor's office. And I, the, what they, with the initial bill that was put forward was that you would opt in after 45 days as the delinquent homeowner, you could opt for your sheriff sale. The government would basically take care of your bill at a county sheriff sale. Everyone would get paid off and you'd get what was left. This would have to be in the first 45 days after the lien is sold? After the foreclosure. So two years okay. in. Okay. Okay. Got it. But, so I, it's, kind of but, a, I, but it's it's but previous I, I, owner driven. Does that sound right? It's well, yeah. I mean, it's it's yes. Uh, it's just where I where I fall down on these is you know, if you're really trying to do good for somebody, how is giving them a 45 day window after, you know, it, generally they're, they're, if they've been non-responsive from the moment of delinquency for nine months to a year before the lien sold for two years after that, I just think there's gotta be something else, you know? And, and I, I, I you know, those are, it's, 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 it's a tough answer. And then the other thing about the opt-in I, I also believe that that when you add that level of kind of uncertainty that to your to what we talked about earlier, your bid rates start going up because I, I might not want to commit that much because of the, you know, what's going to happen. And in New Jersey, if it, like I said, if it's four to four and a half to five years from delinquency, generally like four years from lien purchase, you have to you have to wait four years to get statistics that help you on this. It you it's over. What are you going to do? Yeah. So I think that um, 
there's got to be, which is why our solution, you know, we thought worked. And I, I, I just haven't heard, you know, other than I know that towns kind of want to hold on to the, the premiums. Um, but, you know, if the, if the bidders don't go to premium because they, there's no bidders out there, then there's nothing to hold on to. Right. So it's kind of, you know, kind of how what we're trying to educate on, but I, I, I don't know that everyone's coming from the same place. So. Yeah. There's, uh, yeah. There's going to be lots of different opinions, different ang- you know, people looking at it from different angles. I mean, as far as a, a change, sure. I, and this is my perspective, a, a change that seems somewhat simple and, and adheres to what I think the, 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 the spirit of what Tyler Hennepin is, is trying to say, um, again, my opinion, and I'm not an attorney, but it's, Hey, you know, governments can't make this a profit center. Right. And by it, you know, making that right. tweak essentially would solve that. Right. Counties aren't making this a profit center um, and leaves everything else as, yeah, like you said, every, all the other changes you've mentioned um, to me sound like they're pretty drastic changes, right. With, probably unlike well likely to have many unintended consequences um you know i think one that i thought of right. while you're talking is okay you know sheriff sales and everything well if, if your your stat stats hold true to every other investor and they're actually losing on half of their properties that means half of those properties would never sell that sheriff sale right it is who does that help that's, at the end of the that's, day? and that's what happens right that's when you're going to now pare back what you're willing to do Cause you have to, you can't, you can't, there are a lot of people here that go to tax sales and, you know, you don't have time to review 80,000 liens that are going to go up, you know, for sale in December. Right. So you, you do, do you do what you can, but now maybe you're not willing to take those smaller investments. And like I said, it's not, this is not Illinois where you get a sale and error. If you buy something bad, you pray that somebody goes into the tax office and pays that off. Cause if not, you've got nothing, but it, it's just a, it's just a, it's a, it's a tough, you know, discussion to tell the towns like, you know, it sounds like a threat, but it's, it's not, it's just, you're, we're, we're a business has to make money. And, and, you know, I've heard, I have heard from people in, you know, that, that they're not even hundred percent sure that Tyler even applies to a state where an investor buys the lien, even if the government gets their money, because the government isn't selling anything. They're just taking money from an investor for, for you know, but, you know, we try to not, uh, to your point, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not trying to opine on that, but um, it has been brought up. And uh, I guess a lot of people are waiting for, to see what happens in Nebraska, which I'm guessing Nebraska is going to pretty much stay the course and say, our law is perfectly fine, but I haven't, I haven't seen anything yet. Well, we'll be uh, we'll be talking to one of the attorneys leading, you know, I guess the argument on the side of investors in Nebraska here in a couple of weeks. So anybody interested in that, <laughs> certainly tune in. Well, I guess timeline wise here, Mark, I know, yeah, yeah uh, election is uh, well essentially tomorrow. What what does it look like as far as you know statutes you know being changed or any of this being adopted to where there's a path forward? Is this something that they're trying? Is it do you think this will be fixed in 2024 relatively soon? Or is this a long-term headache for all parties? You know, I, I, I believe it's on the forefront. Uh, we've, what we've been told is that election gets done, you know, assuming the status quo holds, we're going to start moving forward with things um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But, you know, I, you got a lot of holidays coming up. I, I don't know how much is going to get done. I know that in New Jersey, it's like um, like a municipal holiday is the League of Municipalities meeting in Atlantic City every year, and it happens next week. So we'll be down there, you know, talking to people and, you know, hopefully just explaining, you know, kind of the other side, because I don't know that this is a business that people, a lot, a lot of people don't even know this exists. You know, that's because they pay their taxes, you know, so but there's a lot of people that do, and we're, we're trying to, you know, kind of just get, here's the, here are the facts around what we do. You know, we don't get, you know, we don't get handed million dollar homes or even three, $400,000 homes. We slug a lot out in four, the 40 and $50,000 
price range, eking out small profits to, you know, hopefully keep moving forward. Right. Well, I'm sure it sounds like we'll likely be talking about this again in a couple months after hopefully some of that gets worked through and we know kind of which direction it's headed. Um, I appreciate getting us up to speed of where things are at currently um, and look forward to kind of watching that. But uh, well, thanks, Mark, for joining right. me. I appreciate your time. Immensely valuable. And I uh, look forward to talking again. All right. Thank you.